Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. In today's video, I'm talking about how I design my life for flow and zen. And so I'm going to share some of the tips that I use to make sure that I stay happy, healthy, energized, and engaged with everything that I do all the time. Okay, so first, number one, I feel one of the most beneficial things for me has been to try to mix and uh, engage in a varied lifestyle. So what that means is uh, instead of simply focusing on the social part of life or simply on my personal individual goals, I try to mix and match and engage in and have communities that I can engage with and talk to and people that I can connect with and get another perspective from, but also frequent alone time. On top of that, I tend to engage in a lot of different forms of activities. I spend a lot of time budgeting, planning, prioritizing, and I spend a lot of time also out hiking. I spend a lot of time dancing, singing, and I spend a lot of time uh, going swimming, building routines. I spend plenty of time programming and engaging in logical and thought-provoking tasks. I play chess. I have a lot of learning tasks. I learn different languages and read different books. And I try to mix a lot of different things because I've found that too much singular focus on one thing or one goal or one task can lead to a lot of imbalances that can lead to us easily crashing later on. Number two is I try to engage in oppositional thinking. To avoid these kinds of imbalances where we crash or collide or engage in unproductive or unfruitful things, I tend to engage in oppositional thinking. With that I mean that whenever I try to engage in one form of activity, I try to at the same time engage in the opposite kind of activity. This kind of dance of opposites I was taught from uh, the Chinese practice of Qigong, which means to be both yin and yang, to be both masculine and feminine at the same time. And so really the goal here is to find constant balance by learning to be, for example, kind when you give criticism or to be a bit accurate and honest when you are giving compliments, right? Like learning to do these kinds of oppositional things, like learning to balance different traits and to bring opposite functions and forms of personality traits together. First of all, it proves that there are no real opposites and that we can do multiple things at once. But secondly, it promotes balance and it helps you build connections between different neurons in your mind, helping your brain solve more complex and nuanced tasks. Number three is I take frequent breaks. I tend to not focus on a task for longer than an hour if I can avoid it. I notice that my attention flies away after 50 minutes or something like that. And so I tend to frequently get up, stretch, move around. And I stop because when I'm silent, when I'm passive, when I'm in break mode, when I meditate, which I do quite a lot, my brain is allowed to build new pathways, to learn, to compartmentalize, to process and figure things out. And when I return to the activity later, I've got the answer. I figured it out and I'm able to solve the problem more easily. And it also helps me when I'm learning and trying out new things. Number four, I try to do things when I feel like it, which means that a lot of the time, if I don't have the energy to work, I'll go on a walk. If I don't feel like doing something, I'll take a break, I'll go rest, I'll lay down for a bit, or I go do some exercise, or I do something else. I noticed that, while well, certainly we usually don't feel like doing something in a certain time, we always feel like doing something at some time, which means that if we can learn about this and recognize that we have multiple forms of batteries and multiple forms of energy that can be directed in multiple forms of ways, we'll never be tired because if we're in work mode and excited and productive, that feels great. But if we're in meditation mode, we can enjoy that and we can find peace and rest and quiet. So learning to do things when you feel like it and learning to do things because you feel like it helps you stay constantly energized in everything you do. Because now you'll always have the energy to do something and you'll always be like you're putting your attention somewhere or some place important and that you never really zone out or end up in autopilot or shut down. Number five is I keep challenging myself. I keep upping the challenge. I keep putting the level higher. Whenever I start getting bored at the job, I switch and get a new job. Whenever I feel like I've learned all I, there is to know about something, I go and start learning something else. Whenever I start finding like something becomes easy, 
I start making it more difficult. Keeping constant progression and constantly upping the level helps me stay motivated because the more skilled you are at something, the more challenge you need to face in order to maintain a state of flow. If you're challenged to clients, you're gonna get bored and your energy is gonna drop. If your challenge goes too high and your skills are not there yet, you're gonna find that you're gonna struggle and you're gonna get stressed, and you're gonna get anxious and it's gonna get more difficult. So keep your challenge relative to your skill level at all times. Number six is lifelong learning and skill ups. So here I keep trying to keep an accurate track of uh, my skills and blind spots. For example, right now I know that I want to get more physically fit. So I spend a lot of time thinking about how I can incorporate more exercise into my day-to-day -day life. But I also started noticing that I wanted to get better in logical problem solving tasks and critical thinking skills. And that's why I started playing more chess and things like that, because I want to get better at these kinds of thinking. I also have spent a lot of time learning more about budgeting and spreadsheets and things like that, because these ways I can keep myself skilled. And the more skilled you are, the more skills you build up, the more easy everything in life becomes. If you find yourself struggling with something, re realize that you can learn more about it. And by doing that, you're gonna find that uh, you can have flow and enjoyment in everything that you do. Number seven is stoicism. Stoicism has been a very inspirational ideology for me. And stoicism, contrary to popular belief, is not about numbering yourself from your feelings. Stoicism is about allowing yourself to have feelings when you do something difficult, which means that if you find something difficult, you allow yourself to complain about it or feel sad or upset. If something bad happens, you're allowed to feel bad about it, but you're still, will do something about it. You're still going to work at something. You're still gonna take care of it. You're still gonna take responsibility for it. If you did something wrong, made a mistake, you're gonna own up to it. And you're gonna say, hey, I made a mistake. I'm sorry, and I'm gonna get better at it, right? Like this kinds of stoicism, like where it's like, you know, you can speak honestly and vulnerably about something. I call, I call it vulnerable stoicism. They are very inspiring because when somebody says, hey, I'm scared, but I'm gonna do it even though I'm scared, you know, that's super inspiring to everyone around you because that knows, that shows people that, yeah, you're human, but you're still tough. You're still, you can still be strong and soft at the same time. And once again, that's about learning oppositional thinking, learning to be strong, but kind or vulnerable at the same time. It's a way of finding and maintaining balance and making sure that you don't get disconnected from your emotions or your power. Number eight is Taoism. Taoism is the ideology, the religion, the philosophy from China. And uh, it is one of the most accurate and most inspiring ways of thinking if you want to maintain and reach and maintain a positive state of flow. Because when you, when they talk about the Tao and how they talk about the Tao and how Lao Tzu approaches the Tao is the same as flow. When he says the Tao is always perfect. It's always working. It's always great. You know, uh, <laughs> what he's talking about is this this state. You know, because he found that you know there is a state we can tap into. We can tap into the Tao. When he said we should tap into the Tao, we tap into flow. We tap into and we achieve a state of oneness where we feel like whole brain people, like full people, individuals, right? And fully connected to everything inside of us. There is no function or personality trait that we're avoiding or repressing. We are fully in ourselves in a certain situation and we're embodying it all in one activity. And all our brain power, every single neuron is contributing, helping out to help you solve a task. Number nine is uh, walks and exercise. So, I spend a lot of time in nature and I spend a lot of time outside because it's so relaxing and so stimulating for the mind. I find that I never run out of inspiration because whenever I lack inspiration, I just go for a walk. And when I come back, ah, I've got inspiration and I've got ideas and I've got lots of thoughts. And leaving your phone behind when you go out, you know, being able to just go out without any distractions, to just be alone with yourself. Well, you're gonna find that uh, your mind is like, uh, constantly full there is so many thoughts so many ideas so many things that are constantly happening and you can play a jukebox for yourself you don't need to have your mp3 player running music in your head you know you can hear the songs the music as if it's really happening you can see or imagine a scenario as if you're watching it on television in this bright colors as if you're watching it on the telly right uh, when you're 
able to tap into yourself and your own mind, like you realize, hey, I'm never going to be bored because nothing about my brain is boring. <laughs> it's constantly entertaining. Also, number 10, I tend to be a very healthy. I tend to uh, only drink water, tap water, and uh, I tend to avoid all kinds of sodas, sugary drinks. I uh, try to keep my blood sugar levels stable because a lot of the time we crash because we forget to eat or we eat the wrong things and then our energy is all messed up. And so I find that, you know, learning to abstain from eating is sometimes, learning to be able to have a discipline in what you eat and how you eat and to uh, think about these kind of things is super important in order to keep your energy stable and happy and to keep yourself in a good state of mind. So yeah, there's lots of things there. You can meditate, you can engage in uh, and try to find zen in everything that you do because one thing I've realized is there should not be anything that's boring. Like you should be able to find enjoyment in anything that you do. There is no lowly task. There is no boring task. There is no thing that is straining or taxing. It's only your mindset, your attitude towards it. And so you gotta find ways to build and promote harmony between all your values and thoughts and recognize that all the things that you do contribute and play an important role to your life, to your happiness, to your well-being. So why complain about doing the dishes? Why complain about cleaning? Why complain about anything? Why not just step into and find flow? Why not just enjoy this task and activity and feel grateful for the fact that you're here and able to do these things and that you are able to continue to well, live out life here on this planet and with all these wonderful people, right? So yeah, those are my advice. That's how I design my life for flow. I'm still working on it. I'm still figuring things out. And I keep, you know, trying out new things and experimenting with different things. But I do find that it is really helpful and really beneficial. And I feel really good doing these things.